Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. And I'd like to start by saying it's an absolute honor and a privilege to be here. I've been watching TEDx talks for a really long time, so even as I'm standing here, I can't really believe that it's actually me. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So the fingerprint is something that I believe that you are genetically born with, but the fingerprint that you will end up leaving on this earth is something that each and every one of you has the power to create. It's something that changes every day as we go through life, learning and unlearning, bettering ourselves each and every single day. So um, I'd like to start with talking about um, a book, okay? And um, it's a book about two kids with cancer. Is anybody familiar with The Fault in Our Stars by John Green? Okay, so yeah, so you're thinking she got this platform and she's really coming here to talk about the fault in our stars. She's talking about kids with cancer when she could talk about, you know, a lot of other things. But there's something that's really stood out to me in this book. And um, so there's a conversation in the book where one of the characters is asked, what is his greatest fear? And what he says is oblivion. So oblivion is basically the fear of being forgotten. And that makes sense, right? You know, you don't want to live and then you leave here and then nobody kind of knew that you were here. So to a lot of us, it sounds like, so what was the point of us being here? But the reply that he got is what really stood out to me. And it goes along the lines of something like this. There was a time before us and there'll be a time after us, okay? And when that time comes, there'll be nobody to remember Muhammad Ali or Mozart or let alone any one of us. So why do we focus so much on that when we can actually live in the now and make sure that the prints that we leave in the time that we are now, have the, uh, we are here now, have their own impact, be it whether we're remembered a year, um, a year from today or a thousand more, whether we're able to live to a million, it should not matter. What should matter is in the time that you're here now, the marks that you live make an impact right now. So um, my name is Amina and I am a medical student and I introduce myself like this quite a bit and the response I usually get is something along the lines of, oh, you must be really smart, or what kind of doctor are you studying to become? And to be honest, I didn't really know, but then I had a default answer, mainly so that they, would, they wouldn't take back their, oh, you must be really smart comment, because I had to know, right? <laughs> so I would say I wanted to become an orthopedic surgeon, and then they would ask why. Then I would say, oh, I thought the concept of, you know, drilling screws into people's legs was so cool, <laughs> and... <laughs> And I've heard that it's a male-dominated field. And so what's to say, if I did a few weights in the gym, why wouldn't I be able to lift a 20 kg femur and drill holes into it? And so that changed about six months ago. I mean, I still think it's cool, but then I think I found a bit more purpose. <laughs> so um, I did an emergency medicine rotation. And um, so it was on a Sunday, about 9 o'clock in the morning. We were standing around. It was a really slow day. And the attending we were working with tells us that they have a trauma case coming in. So he asks if anybody wanted to help. And till this day, I really don't know what happened when my hand shot up and he handed me a gown that I basically didn't even know how to put on. But eventually I got the hang of it and the cases come in. And as you can imagine, it was bloody. It was like nothing I'd ever seen before. There was a lady with a hole in her face that you could literally see her teeth through. It was like nothing I'd ever seen before. So um, they went through the case and um, basically trying to do everything that they could to save this woman's life. And um, it was amazing. Like, I talk about it every opportunity that I get. And um, although she didn't end up making it, the way that they did their job right, that, right there really changed something in me that day. And it made me want to find my purpose, find something that I truly believed in, find my best life, and then live it. So yeah, find your best life and then live it. So they, they walked in to the ER that day to do their job like they would do on a regular single day, but the de dedication and the passion that they put into it, while they didn't realize, really changed something in me. And these are the kind of fingerprints that I feel are important. Okay, so sympathy. Um, ooh. Sympathy, um, so what I believe is that um, sympathy is good, but what the world needs is empathy. 
So sympathy is basically being able to feel sorrow, okay? So when you see somebody's misfortune, you're able to feel sorry for them. Now, while this may sound good and dandy, it should be what we should do, right? Somebody tells you they're sad, you should feel sorry for them. Somebody tells you something has happened to them, you should feel sorry for them. But what this does is, is it limits us. And so what we need to uh, manifest more of is empathy. Now, empathy is the ability to put ourselves in other people's shoes. It is empathy that is going to allow us to be able to stand up and make change. Okay, it is empathy that allows us to, feel, to not only feel sorrow, but to feel kindness and to basically to feel what other people feel so that we don't just scroll past it, we make sure that we are doing our bit to make sure that um, these atrocities do not keep repeating themselves. Okay. Then I want to also speak about speaking up, which has been, okay, speaking up. Um, so, okay, so as a black woman, okay, um, I exist in the world in a situation where when something is done to me and I speak up about it, the first thought that comes for the most part is, why are you so aggressive? Okay, it's associated with aggression. It could be something as simple as my foot being stepped on, but if I said I didn't like it, it would be aggression. So because of this reaction, for the longest time, my method of dealing with stuff was silence. I would kind of hide back and just let things be the way they were and just hopefully, hopefully they would, you know, fan out. But I've since come to realize that this does nothing for me, it does nothing for my environment and it does nothing for my aggressor. If I cannot speak up, things cannot change. We all have a voice and we need to manifest and understand the power of that voice. And while my one voice may not do something in the moment, you cannot take away from the power of a collective voice. Then the last thing I want to speak to you about is spreading happiness. And um, so I had a friend who passed away when I was 16. And um, so I met him when I had recently joined a new school and he came up to me and he asked if I, want, if he wanted, if I, wanted, if I wanted to be his friend. And I thought it was some sort of trick question because nobody's really nice, that nice to the new kid most of the time. So I said no. And he said to me, okay, because you said no, we are going to be friends. And so what would happen is he would tease me every single day and I would get offended. He would tease my accent. I sometimes drop the tease at the end of my words and he would always mimic me. And my overly sensitive self would get offended every single time. Sometimes there would even be tears involved. And that was our friendship. But then the thing about him is he did something that every single time he would do this, he would come back and he would say something that made me smile. And that was Siddiq. This is the way that we knew him. He, was, he, he basically lived to spread happiness. And for a long time after he passed away, I would sit down and I would think about how it was sort of unfair that he had left us at such an early age. But I've somehow found peace in knowing in the time that he was here, he spread happiness and that has to count for something. We live in a world, a very digital world today where we share ourselves every single day in the things that we create, the things that we share, and the things that we say online. And so more than ever, it is important that we are very conscious of what we are saying and what we are doing, because we cannot manifest change and we will continue to live in situations that are dire. We will continue to not to live in situations that are dire if we do not all come together, manifest the power of the fingerprint. And when I say this, I mean that you are able to draw the fingerprint that you live in th on this world. So as, as even though that is, it's something that you're genetically born with, you are able to add kindness, you are able to add sympathy, you are able to add empathy. Whatever you want, you have the power to add it to your fingerprint and make sure that the one that you leave on the world is one that you are proud of, whether you live a day from today or a thousand more, know that you have left this earth with a fingerprint that you are proud of. And your great-great-grandkids may not remember you, but you will rest in your grave knowing that in the time that you were here, you did good. Thank you so much. <laughs>